Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, I wanted to go through all of the attributes or abilities that you're able to raise during character creation. I know a lot of you are figuring out your builds. Some of you are repeatedly starting over the game, trying to find that perfect build. So I've been going over races, backgrounds, and now attributes to try to give you all the information I can to help you make an educated decision. Let's go ahead and dive in. First up, we have strength. So strength comes into play with melee attack rolls, and it also comes into play for damage rolls when using a melee weapon or a thrown weapon. It also can come into play for damage when you're using a bow if you're using a composite bow because composite bows will take your strength modifier and add it to the damage roll. And for those who are not aware, basically every two levels of an attribute, you're gonna get an increase to your modifier. And there are a bunch of different things in the game that will use your modifier in different ways. So strength, most of the time, its modifier is being applied in some sort of way to damage. It can also be applied to athletic skill checks. So if you plan to create a character that specializes in athletics, you'll probably want to make sure it's a strength-based character as well. There are some classes for each attribute that really require you to boost a particular stat if you want to be successful in it. So for strength, of course, fighters, barbarians, chevaliers, basically any class that is going to use high strength, you're going to want to build your strength up. It's also going to increase the maximum amount of weight that your character can carry. Encumbrance is not a huge issue in this game as far as I can tell. You, um, the amount that you're able to carry, um, your entire team counts towards that. It's not just you. So if you have another strength-based character on your team like Sela, she's going to help a lot. Any pets that you have on your team, their ability to carry weight is also going to count towards your encumbrance. And then you also get bags of holding that are going to allow you to be able to carry a lot more as well. So if you're worried about having more strength because you're worried about carry weight, which of course is a huge issue in some other games that are like this, you don't have to worry about that, that in Pathfinder, in my opinion. Encumbrance is not really something that I have to deal with a lot as long as you're not trying to take everything with you all the time. So this is a stat that if you don't use strength at all in your build, you can safely dump it without any regards. Next up is dexterity. So dexterity affects your ranged attack rolls when you're using bows, crossbows, things of that nature. Um, it's also used for some um, ranged spell attacks like Scorching Ray or Hellfire Ray. So if you're a sorcerer who's going to use ray attacks, you probably want to have a decent dexterity score. It doesn't have to be astronomical the way it would be for archers, but you definitely don't want to dump it and you're probably going to want to throw some of your extra points into it. Dexterity is also going to help with your armor class, provided that the bonus is not limited by the armor's maximum dexterity bonus. So when you look at the stats on a heavy armor, a lot of times it will say your maximum dexterity bonus can be two, which means that if you have a 16 in dexterity, basically uh, one uh, plus one is going to be wasted. It's not actually going to count towards your AC because you're not wearing a light enough armor for that dexterity to count. So usually if I'm making a, a strength-based fighter, I bring dexterity up to around 14. That allows me to count a little bit of dexterity towards my armor, gives me a little bit more tankiness, but at the same time, I don't have to worry about my heavy armor completely negating some of the attribute points that I've spent and, and so I find it to be a nice balance. But even if you're going to be like a heavy armor uh, fighter who's depending on strength, 
you do still want to put a couple of points into dexterity. It's just going to make you sturdier and make it easier for you to be that frontline fighter. Dexterity does also come into play when it comes to reflex saving throws. So basically, if an enemy team does something like throws a fireball at you, your reflex saving throw is going to decide how much damage you actually take from that account. So if you ended up dumping your dexterity stat, you could be in a situation where you're very susceptible to some of the spells and abilities that your enemies are doing. It also is going to help with specific skills, trickery, which is your ability to unlock chests and lock doors, uh, mobility, and stealth skill checks. So if you plan to specialize in any of those skills, you should strongly consider having a class that makes it advantageous for you to specialize in dexterity. Next up is constitution. Obviously constitution helps increase your hit points. It also affects your fortitude saving throws. So um, when enemies attempt to poison you, disease you, or do death effects towards you like destruction, your constitution score and the buffs that you put on it are going to decide how good you are at resisting these attempts. Now, a question that I get all the time on my Lich builds is, do you need a constitution score if you are planning to become a Lich? And the answer is yes. Because when you actually select the option to make Lich your mythic path, what you are basically saying is, this is what I'm going to pursue. I'm going to attempt to become a Lord of the Undead. You do not immediately become a Lord of the Undead. That does not happen until much, much later in the game. So for the vast majority of the game, even if you are a damn peer who is trying to become a Lich, you will still need a constitution score. And I definitely recommend that you do not, under any circumstances, dump this stat Unless you're way later in the game and you've become a lich, of course, and then that's different. But otherwise, for at, at level one, do not dump this stat. And more than likely, you're going to want to put a couple of points into it. If you're a frontline fighter, then you're probably going to want this around 14 as well. Usually I have a 14 in dexterity and a 14 in constitution. And I try to take a race that allows me to increase one or both of those stats as well. Um, if you're going to be a mage spellcaster or someone who's a little bit further back, I'm a little bit more comfortable with leaving it at 12. Usually I do not leave it at 10. I find that if you leave it at 10, you, you make yourself susceptible to a random critical hit or a random full attack done against you, wiping out all of your health and putting you on the ground. You don't want that situation, of course. Next up is intelligence. So intelligence is going to determine how many skill points you get every time you level up. And it's also going to help you with the knowledge arcana and knowledge world skills. So if you plan to use those, you should definitely consider increasing your intelligence. And if you're a particular type of, of uh, class, such as a wizard or an arcanist or a witch, you're going to need intelligence because it decides how many spells you have to be able to play with. If you do not care about skill points and you have no intention whatsoever in increasing your ranks and knowledge arcana and knowledge world, you can completely dump intelligence with, with total disregard. There are some feats that require you to have at least a three in intelligence, but as far as I know, it's not possible to dump intelligence lower than three. So that's not something you have to consider. So if your build doesn't need it, by all means, go ahead and dump it again, as long as you don't need any skills. Wisdom controls your will saving throws first and foremost. So it negates the effects of charm person and other spells. Wisdom is a requirement, an absolute requirement for all of your builds. At the very least, you need to leave it at 10. There is no build I'm aware of that allows you to safely dump wisdom. When you get past um, act three in the game, you are going to run into a ton of enemies that will attempt to charm you, 
twist you around in all sorts of ways. I mean, you'll have fights where you approach the enemy. There'll be seven enemies. Each one of them will just try to dominate you. Like, they won't move. They won't shoot. They don't care about none of that. They're like, do you, are you mentally strong? If you're not mentally strong, it's not even worth our time bothering to lift the finger. All right. So if your will saving throws are not up to snuff during the harder levels of the game, you will spend every single fight being someone's toy and it's not going to be fun. All right. So if nothing else, you need to leave this at 10. And there are a lot of builds that benefit greatly from actually raising wisdom. So if you um, have wisdom, it's going to help you with your perception, lore nature, and lore religion skill checks. I've already mentioned multiple times, religion and perception are the most important skills in the game for quite some time. So this is yet another reason why wisdom is so important and why it's not something that you can ignore. There are a bunch of different classes that you can read here who really require a higher score in wisdom, like clerics, druids, inquisitors, things of that nature. So if you're one of those classes, you absolutely want to make sure that you are building your wisdom up. And then finally, we have charisma. So charisma is going to determine, help determine your effectiveness in persuasion and use magic device. Use magic device is important if you plan to use a lot of scrolls. It does come up as a skill check in conversations or situations every so often, but I would say it's one of the less common skills that the game actually tests you on. There are a ton of situations in this game where being able to use persuasion is very, very valuable. However, through Act 4, the vast majority of situations that I've seen where you can use persuasion, you've had the rest of your team with you and you could potentially use somebody else's persuasion score if you want to. So in conversation, the same way that someone's knowledge world check or um, Lord nature check would count for you, their persuasion score will count for you. So even if you have someone like Darren who has a high uh, persuasion check in your conversations, even if yours is rock bottom, you'll just use his and things will go just fine. But if you're by yourself, of course, you would only have your own persuasion score to depend upon. I have not encountered a, a situation in the game yet where I felt like that was a real issue. So I say that to say, if you don't care about persuasion, if you're not using use magic uh, device skills, and you do not need to channel energy like a cleric or a paladin, then you can safely dump charisma with complete disregard. There's no defensive penalties for doing that. And that's the video. I hope it gave you all some additional valuable information. I hope this helped you figure out what, how you want to construct your builds and what kind of character you're looking to run. If it did and you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.